Probably the hardest part of starting to work with polynomials for most students is all the new vocabulary that gets introduced. We start using all these big words in math class and students will get lost. And so all I wanted to do really quickly was to review some of the vocabulary uh, that gets involved with polynomials. I did have a student who was watching some videos getting really confused because she didn't understand the words that were being used. So let's take a look here at some polynomial vocabulary. First of all, polynomial means many terms. Poly means many. A polynomial is an algebraic expression consisting of terms. Uh, now I realize I've already lost some of you, so let's give ourselves consisting. Let's give ourselves a little example here. Uh, for example, here is a polynomial. Uh, 2x to the third power plus 4x squared minus 6x minus 9 is a polynomial. Now, um, it is important to understand the word terms. So I just went and used another word that perhaps you don't understand. And so you're going, well, how am I supposed to know this is consisting of terms? And terms in, in math class are these expressions that are adding or subtracting. And so when I look at something as a, a a component of terms, I'm going to look um, at where the adding and subtracting is. And so this particular polynomial example that I've given you has four terms. The first term is 2x to the third power, and that is adding uh, with, I shouldn't say, well, I can say adding or I can say positive, but the idea is then we have plus 4x squared, so plus 4x squared or positive 4x squared. Um, those are synonymous there, um, is another term. And then we have a negative 6x as a, another term and negative 9 as a, another term. So you can see this particular uh, algebraic expression has four things that are adding or subtracting, and so it has four terms. It's a type of polynomial. Now, we can actually, we have specific words that we use to um, classify polynomials, so types of polynomials that are based on the number of terms. Three words you should know. You should know monomial. Monomial. If you, und if you know the um, word root, the prefix mono, mono means one, so a monomial consists of only one term. Okay. Then we have binomial, like a bicycle has two wheels, a uh, binomial has two terms. Why don't we get some examples? So an example of a monomial might be negative 3x to the fifth power. Yes, it's to the fifth power. Yes, it's multiplying by negative three, but it's just one term. There's nothing else that it's adding or subtracting with. Then a binomial might be negative three x to the fifth plus seven. Second I add another term, something else adding or subtracting, it becomes a binomial. We also talk about trinomials. And just like a tricycle has three wheels, a trinomial has three terms. So an example of that might be negative 3x to the fifth plus x plus 7. One, two, three terms. Okay, so that's some way this, that you can classify polynomials. Now, let's look at the individual terms to talk about the language you use for those, okay? So let's just bust out that first term that we were looking at, negative 3x to the fifth power. This is a term all by itself. And there's a couple of things that you should know about a term. First of all, the number in front of a term is known as its coefficient. Careful when you talk about coefficients that you mention the sign in front of them. The coefficient of this term is negative three. 
the exponent, the floating number of a term is known as its degree, its degree. But careful, degrees are not cardinal numbers, are counting numbers, they're ordinal numbers, are ordering numbers. Like if you said, what spot are you in line? You wouldn't say, I'm in one spot. You would say, I'm in first spot, the first spot. Those are the um, ordinal numbers, like first, second, third, fourth. So this particular term is a fifth degree. Okay. So now we understand that that leading number is called a coefficient and that the exponent determines the degree of the um, term. Now let's take a look at what's known as standard form. There's actually a standard form. Mathematicians usually write polynomials in standard form. Now, what does standard form mean? Basically, you organize the terms based on their exponents. We're gonna go from the highest exponent or degree to the lowest uh, degree or exponent term. So let's bust out a polynomial. Uh, we could be asked to write the polynomial in standard form. And a polynomial for us, how about like 2x minus 17x to the fifth power plus x cubed uh, plus 7 mm, plus 4x squared. Okay, so here's a polynomial. Notice it has five terms. One, two, three, four, five. Five things adding and subtracting. In order to have this in standard form, standard form, I'm going to put the one with the highest exponent or the highest degree, that's the same difference, first. And so I can see that my um, term with the highest degree is this negative 17x to the fifth. It's not about the coefficient, the number in front. It's all about the degree, the exponent. This one has the highest exponent. And so I'm gonna move him out in front in order to rewrite this in standard form. Now be careful to take his sign with him. That negative sign or that minus sign is owned by that term. Okay, so I finished that one. Now, which one of these terms has the next highest exponent? Well, uh, the cube here, so I write plus x to the third power. Next highest exponent is the square plus 4x squared. Now, some students don't know which one comes first uh, now between 2x and positive 7 because they say neither one has an exponent. And that's not actually true. If you look at 2x, there is an exponent. That we have a, anytime you don't see an exponent on this uh, variable here, you can assume that it has an invisible one. It's like it's x to the first power. So this is the next term that I'm gonna write. Now, don't be the foolish student who writes this. Let me pull out my red pen so you can recognize foolish student. They just shove 2x up next to 4x squared. Remember that when you shove things together in math class, you're you're making multiplication. This was a list of things adding and subtracting, not numbers multiplying. And so it's super important that I have either a plus or a minus sign in front of 2x. Well, which one should I use? Assume when you don't see a sign that this thing is positive. And so we will put plus 2x. And now my last term is always gonna be this plain old number plus seven, and you should know those plain old number terms have a name, they're known as constant terms. Constant terms, why are they called constant? Well, remember that my letters in math are called variables, why? Because they can change. I could trade out x for seven, for three, for 45. That x can change, and depending on what it changes to, the value of my expression will change. However, 
Seven is seven is seven is seven is seven. Is seven if seven is not multiplying with any variable, then it is going to remain constant, unchanging. And so we call that the constant term. Okay, we're almost done with this little bit of uh, language lecture. Just a few more things that I want to point out to you. This guy that had the highest exponent, and so he ended up out front when we wrote it in standard form, is known as the leading term. The entire thing is called the leading term. So negative 17x to the fifth power is known as the leading term. People will often ask also, what is the leading coefficient? Same idea, it's from that thing out in front, but remember coefficient is just the number. And so negative 17 here would be the leading coefficient. Leading coefficient is just the coefficient on the leading term. Okay. And final thing, people will ask, what is the degree of the polynomial? The degree of the polynomial. And I need like a little more room here. Can I write it up here? We said the degree of the term was here, but the degree of the entire polynomial Right? Each term has its own degree, but the degree of the polynomial will be the degree of the leading term. The first, the very first term when it's written in standard form, the guy with the highest exponent. So this one's highest exponent is five. So this particular um, polynomial is a fifth degree polynomial. Okay, that tells us that we have a fifth degree polynomial. Okay, so that's a lot of the language um, that we use when we talk polynomials. I hope that helps to clear things up for you.